Facilitating learning online in general, and especially in a synchronous format, can be very effective and also very enjoyable for you and your learners, as long as you follow two key rules. First, you are a facilitator of learning, not a content deliverer. And second, you use technology to enhance learning and avoid falling into the trap of letting the technology dictate what you do. It needs repeating that your responsibility is to facilitate learning, not deliver content online. We know from research and from practice, the most effective instructors in the online environment are those who make it easier for the learner to learn and assist their learner's progress in making those meaningful connections. This is the essence of facilitation. But what about all the content that needs to be covered or addressed? Yes, you'll have curriculum and content that you will want your learners to engage with, and there are a multitude of ways of using the online learning environment to enable your learners to engage with that content. It is very easy to use online tools like learning management systems, LMSs, or websites to give your learners access to digital documents, digital textbooks, digital simulations, tools, applications, and much, much more. We will address these online curriculum design issues in greater detail in the 3330 design course. When you are engaged in meeting your learners online in real time, which is what we refer to as synchronous collaboration, this is not the time to deliver content. This is the time to communicate, to build community, and build trust with your learners. Research confirms that feedback from a trusted teacher, mentor, or coach is one of the most important factors contribu contributing to student achievement. Your synchronous collaboration sessions are the time to build that trust as you create your online learning environment. You also have to remember that even though you are the subject matter expert and the teacher, the course you are teaching really is not about you. It is your learners and you're helping them make that meaningful connection as they move toward developing their knowledge and their capabilities. Therefore, in your synchronous session, you'll want to focus on communication, collaboration, and engagement. Yes, you'll also have to share key information to help your learners, but you must do so in a way that fosters active engagement rather than just passive compliance. Many of the well-established classroom engagement strategies, like the BOPS model, can easily be adapted and moved into the online learning environment. There are also some strategies that you can engage in online that will be much more engaging than what you have in a face-to-face -face setting. The key is to find the right balance. We will be modeling and using these facilitation and engagement methods in our weekly meetings, and we'll also model a synchronous session that you can participate in. We'll also be recording these sessions so that you'll be able to review them at your convenience. You'll also have the opportunity to engage in two or more of your classmates' synchronous sessions, so you'll have several examples and experiences to draw upon as you develop and facilitate your own synchronous session. I've always been an advocate of active and dynamic learning, so in my face-to-face -face classes, I have always used engagement and facilitation strategies, so moving these to the online environment haven't been that difficult, and I know you will benefit from the modeling and examples that you will be exposed to. This brings me to our second rule. Use technology to enhance the learning rather than let the technology dictate what you do. I think one of the most challenging aspects of facilitating learning online, at least in my experience, is the tendency to let technology dictate what you do rather than use the technology to enhance learning. Just because you can do something with an app or a piece of software or technology in general doesn't mean that you should or that it will even be effective. This has always been a challenge for me, not because I'm uncomfortable with technology, but because I have always been an avid user of technology. So I unfortunately have a tendency to try and do too much with the technology and have either overloaded my learners with too much technology or had them engaged with a new app, tool, or process simply because I could. By focusing on the technology rather than the learning, I was limiting the learning by forcing my learners into the constraints of the technology. Being boxed into the limits of technology or forcing instruction into that limiting box of technology rather than using the technology to enhance learning is also a problem with instructors who may either lack experience or confidence in using technology. It is important to get to the point where you have enough understanding of the technology that you are using to know what you can and cannot do with it and not allow it to limit your instruction, but use it to enhance the learning. 
A lot of challenges with, te with technology can be mitigated by the selection of effective technology that will work, and in this course you will see we are using tools like Kaltura and Zoom, which may be limited by a power user's perspective, but there is no denying that these are easy tools to use and they just work. A second challenge that some folks fall into is a notion that they have to be trained to use technology or follow a step-by-step -step approach to use technology rather than use an active learning methodology that promotes exploration and experimentation. I address this trap of training in another video that some may find helpful, especially if you tend to believe that you need to have training or be trained before you can be effective with the technology. Don't let yourself be limited in your learning by thinking that you may have difficulty with technology and need training before you can move forward. Whether you are a leading edge technology user or someone who is a little bit more hesitant with technology, you will be able to use Zoom easily to run your own synchronous session. The more important part of the synchronous session is the learning. How will you set it up? How will you structure your session? How will you welcome and engage your learners? How will you facilitate collaboration? How will you limit content delivery while you still share key information? How will you coach and guide your learners towards making those meaningful connections? Rather than fall into the talking is teaching trap ourselves and try to answer these questions through lecturing you, we are going to show you and engage you by having you participate in a variety of synchronous sessions like our class meetings, the synchronous example that we have modeled, or the synchronous collaboration sessions that your classmates have created and that you are being asked to participate in. You will also be required to promote your own synchronous collaboration session in the synchronous form and encourage your fellow classmates to take in your session. Full details and technical specifications are provided in the synchronous collaboration description and supporting uh, documents in the module. With a bit of exploration and experimentation and collaboration, you'll be able to develop and run your own synchronous collaboration session.